Now let's have a look at the architectural responses to the uh, conditions imposed on us by an embedded uh, real-time system. Now the first thing that comes up all the time is you start by getting the requirements right. Um, this is not considered to be a suitable place for um, iterative development and agile um, systems. I mean, you can do that as a prototype if you wish, but when it comes around to building these systems, then you really ought to um, get all the requirements right so far as you possibly can. Um, now, the the two uh, cited people there, Nance, um, Heitmeier, of, uh, Constance, I think, Heitmeier, uh, did quite a lot of work for the US military. And the US military, um, you tend not to be able to, to test these things uh, that well. I mean, they've got to function when they function. Uh, Nancy Levison has uh, investigated an, an enormous number of um, problems with industrial systems and uh, it writes quite a lot on um, uh, industrial reliability or reliability of um, complex software such as you might put in the um, space probes. They must have high determinacy. Now embedded systems can't afford to have circumstances where they just didn't think of or we didn't think of how to respond to them. <clears throat> So there should always be a fallback action. Now it's not as if you must absolutely predict every possible thing that could happen, but there has to be some strategy to deal with the circumstances where there isn't, there isn't some anticipation. There is, there is uh, no answer. So the, obviously it's better if you can think of all of those things, but if you can't, you have to have some strategy to deal with it. Now, uh, I'd refer you to Charles Perrow's book, Normal Accidents, uh, which he wrote in response to what he considered to be a superficial inquiry of the Challenger um, disaster. And he concluded that most accidents are the result of an unforeseeable combination of many things that are supposedly impossible, but they all go wrong at the same time. Now, despite our trying, uh, we have to acknowledge that we uh, will always have less than perfect capacity to predict and control the world. So we'd have to acknowledge that uh, there are going to be things that, will, that we will not have anticipated and that the system will have to deal with. So um, the whole uh, answer to this is, is to try to avoid tightly coupled systems and highly constrained systems, allow it to have some strategy to fail and anticipate the need to recover. A high reliability architecture, well the first thing is don't be clever. Um, people who are dealing with re highly reliable systems tend to use well-known, well-understood, simple solutions. Your architecture should do the same. There should be multiple points of failure. So this usually means you have backups. Um, and if, if one uh, system fails, you switch over to the other one. Now that works well for mechanical systems. Where it comes to electronic systems, if, um, if there's some logic bug in it and you have a backup system, well, the logic bug's going to be in the backup system too, isn't it? Or if you have data corruption in one, possibly you have data corrupting one of them, then you can shut that one down and use the backup and clean out the data. So it depends on the nature of the error. So, uh, in a system, you, you really do need to try and have um, incorporate multiple opportunities to correct faults. Now, I believe this is the strategy that's used by the Erlang, uh, highly reliable systems. Um, essentially, they say, well, if a uh, module goes bad, you just um, kill the module, and kill that process or that thread, and restart it, and allow the system to recover from it. And as I said before, keep it simple. Now this gets back to your basic lessons in coupling and complexity. Keep the coupling loose and um, minimal and keep the complexity down. Keep it highly cohesive and uh, as simple as is possible, but obviously no simpler. So um, yeah, it, it really is just keep your architecture simple. 
Now, a consideration that you may or may not have to face is that uh, really good systems of any variety do tend to last a long time. And if you manage to build a really good embedded system, then you'll probably uh, find that it's being, being uh, ported to other places. And so you'll have this portability uh, constraint on it. And uh, you, you might like to think about that when you're designing it to, to think that possibly this will actually get ported elsewhere. So your architecture should allow for portability. And that usually means you keep it reasonably modular and you uh, isolate the highly specific parts of it. So a summary then, start by getting the requirements right. Try to use techniques that maximize determinancy. Design an architecture that has multiple points of failure and minimize your coupling and complexity.